Good morning, Clarkston, and thank you for joining us this morning on the third Sunday of Lent. Let's start today with a question, and stay with me here for a second. Have you ever been out, driving, at a store, taking a walk, or maybe just home watching television or scrolling through your phone, and you see a person that you thought looked like or was acting like a fool? So, okay, I know the answer. It's obviously yes. We've all seen those people, and we've all had that experience. We have all seen someone or many ones who we thought uh, we're just doing something that looked ridiculous, right? Now we all know our faith guidelines about judging others. We are all aware we need to be extremely careful with those moments of judgment. But at this particular moment, I want you to put those guidelines aside for just a second. We know judging is very human, but it's not part of our ideal faithful behavior. But for this moment, I want us to really dig into the idea, that time when we see or think someone is foolish. Take yourself through it. Maybe close your eyes and reflect for a second. What are you doing? Are you driving to work or running an errand? And you saw that person or those people and you thought, what are they doing? What's wrong with them? How can they be doing that, or why aren't they doing something different besides that? What has gotten into them? Does that sound familiar? Maybe it's in a store, and it's not just one person, but it's a group of people, or a family. And you think, what the heck is going on with them? Why are they... who could or you've got to be kidding me. Maybe it's not even in person. Maybe it's someone on your screen. It's easy to find those these days. And in fact, we're encouraged to really search them out in some ways. How could they wear that? What an idiotic thing to do. They have no idea what they're talking about. Loser. Liar. Hypocrite. Nobody cares what you think. Maybe somewhere along the line, you even raise your voice or start to use some more choice words. If you don't feel like you have been to this extreme, I bet you still thought it. I bet you still walked by or saw or just shook your head in disbelief. Am I right? Can you think of a time like that? Sometimes I bet we are actually angry with those people. And sometimes I bet we just don't get it. No matter which one, we still offer the same gestures. We still offer that same head shake. Our scripture today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. And it's actually a very famous scripture by Paul. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of his age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our acts to care for those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger 
than human strength. The Word of God for and through us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. While Paul is making this point, he himself has written this paragraph of this wonderfully flowing, balanced rhetoric that one can only assume was deliberately being shared to tease his hearers, perhaps hoping to make um, or humor or to pro provoke irony the serious point that was underneath. The point is that whenever Paul came into a new city, whenever he came into a pagan city that prided itself on its intellectual, inter, intellectual and cultural life and stood up to speak about Jesus of Nazareth, who had been crucified by the Romans and who was now dead, he was summoning people to this unique invitation he knew what people would think. This was and is the craziest message anyone could imagine sharing. This wasn't a smart new philosophy of the time. It was kind of nuts. It wasn't an appeal to high culture. It was news of an executed criminal from a despised group of people. And Paul was pretty comfortable with his role as this kind of instigator, revealer, and challenger with his speeches. And Paul's actions illustrate that he is talking what exactly he's talking about in Scripture. People think what we believe as Christians is foolish, maybe even dumb, possibly criminal. Paul knew those things and had to live through that challenge of his time and place. What we believe is foolishness to the world, Paul said. He had experienced it daily. The early church had experienced it daily. And so the question for us is, do we experience it? Let's go back to the earlier experiment, remembering times we thought others were foolish, Remembering times we shook our heads in disbelief or disgust? Have you ever been seen as the foolish one for the quality of your faith, for living the faith? Have you ever had anyone shake their head at you and ask, what the heck is wrong with them? Because you were so compassionate so forgiving, or so patient? Has anyone criticized you because you stood up for the weak or the marginalized, or some oppressed group? Or does anyone just shake their head when they see your willingness to sacrifice and care, or because you offered radical hospitality? or because you try to be unconditionally loving. Have we ever been the foolish ones for what our faith inspired us to believe and how it inspired us to act? Lent is a great time for such a difficult question. Who are we as people of faith? And how does the world actually see us how does the world actually see you and me? Not our denomination, not our church steeple, not our affiliation with faith groups, but us individually and corporately in our actions of faith. Is my faith so easy to overlook that no one even notices how odd I am? Does no one shake their head at us anymore? Amen.